Now, she was South Africa's first talk show host. She is an international award-winning entrepreneur, an inspirational speaker, author, philanthropist, and mother. We're deeply honored to have in our loft the legendary Felicia Mabuza Sato. Welcome to the loft. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I paid it to say all those great uh, things about me. Thank you couldn't you, pay Bonnie. me enough. <laughs> Thank you, Bonnie. I am so proud of you, your success, and more importantly, your book as well. Uh, that touched so many people. So thanks for having me here. It is an honor. It's such an honor. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Right. So let's start in the early years. We've got a lot to get through. Wow. You grew up in Sophia Town. That's right. Many icons and great names have come from that place. What is it about that place that just made it so vibrant and produced so many amazing people? You know, I was a young little girl then. I have vivid memories about Sophia Town. I had vivid memories about singing for Mrs. Mutsielwa and the Manhattan Brothers and Miriam Makeba were on the same Greyhound bus and we'd go to places like Kronstadt and uh, Bloemfontein and wherever yeah. and watching this woman that I admired, Miriam mm -hmm. Makeba, saying mm -hmm. one day I'm going to sing like Miriam Makeba. But I was kind of a lead singer too with the tiny tots. I see. It was a band <laughs> called Peter Razan's band. So it was just vibrant Chinese, Indian, it's Zulu, Sutu, yeah. Afrikaans speaking. We're all together. That's why maybe I can fool around with nearly 11 like, official languages. languages yes, <laughs> yep. yes. Uh -huh. Now, your, your grandfather played a big role in your upbringing mm -hmm. and he inspired you in many ways. What do you remember most about him and what are some of the lessons that he taught you that you still hold to today? I remember one thing. In fact, uh, Mr. Nchona in London said to me, he was more British than the British. <laughs> All I know is that we had to go and get ready for dinner every night. It wow. was quite... To wash up and clean up. That's right. And the table was laid every night. We had to help lay the table. And we went through this three to four course meal. So wow. he... I'm serious. He taught us how to be regal in many ways. Decorum. I, that's right. Yes. I remember the way a Persian <laughs> rugs. And I said one day... Why do we have these rugs? I mean, we should have wall-to-wall -wall carpet in this mm -hmm. house. And my mm -hmm. grandfather said, one day you'll understand what these wow. rugs are. So he taught us class. You know, you're born with class. It's not acquired. That's incredible. And then you had the opportunity to leave South Africa at a time at like the height of apartheid mm -hmm. and go and study in the States. And you studied journalism and mm -hmm. mass communication. Mm, that's right. What was that experience like? It what was a an new world. What a new world and quite risky for the girl from the dusty, daring, dangerous streets of Soweto who just dared and left South Africa. How afraid were you? You know, funny time. enough, I was not afraid, but I remember I cried so much. And in this picture, there's a picture of me with little young people at the, at the airport. These were young people I used to teach ballroom dance to. I used to teach them yes, Latin you're American. A dance yes, I was a ballroom oh, Because I said to myself, what, <laughs> what do I know? What can I do to teach young people, mm -hmm. keep them out of the streets and keep them occupied, teach them something that they possibly would love? And then I was a, 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 a model, a, a photographic model, yes. thanks to Merona Manye. And you still should be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. At, at 29? You think it still looks good? Okay. But um, it, it was quite an honor. And then being one of the first black women to be a, a Lux model. Yes, yes. That's you were, right. You endorsed Lux. That's yes. right. So I, had, I I remember a picture of you with a gorgeous little afro and foam uh, around me. No, the hair was pushed back, girl. It oh, pushed, pushed back, back, yeah. Yeah, with yeah. a little <laughs> Dolira Tebe bun at the back. But um, so anyway, I get to America and uh, I'm saying, okay, here am I in this foreign country. Uh -huh. Quite a scary experience. But I knew I was going, I was going to school. I knew what I wanted. I want to be somebody. I wanted an education. I knew that through education and exposure, I can beat apartheid. That's wow. literally, that was my, my, my weapon against apartheid. 
I don't know how many people know that in the 80s you uh, started at Radio Buputatswana. That's which was quite a controversial <laughs> move. Which was quite a controversial move. Tell us but why. Anything to get close like. to home. I felt being at Radio Bob and being part of the executive team that started TV Bob, I was close to my people. I was speaking Sotswana. I was speaking even Afrikaans. I was speaking... English, I was speaking Zulu. Yes, it, the politics of the country were quite interesting then. Yes. But I enjoyed imparting ideas, exchange of communication with people, doing the jazz show. And, and the art my slogan was dance. the lady with a touch of class. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So it, it, it was um, a heartwarming experience. Then I went back to the US and went to teach at the university there, went to work in the corporate world. It was always my dream to see wow. this girl wow. from Soweto standing in front of a, a, a class of white and black students imparting knowledge. It, so it was amazing. a dream seeing a girl from Soweto then walking the hallways of corporate America, seeing a girl at that time heading communications for the city council of Atlanta. So it was quite an experience for wow. me. Wow. We have so much to talk about, but we're going to take a short break. And when we return, we'll chat about your career as a talk show host, your two books, so much more. Thank you, Vaughn. <laughs> awesome. More riveting talk when we return with Felicia Mabuza Sattel. Don't go away. But let's fast forward to 1992. South Africa is not familiar with the whole talk show format. And you arrive and you launch the Felicia Mabuza Sattel show. Well, it, in, the it, show that gets South Africa talking. That's right. But you know, when we first started, it was called Top Level. Um, that was il November 11th, that. 1992. The first show I remember was about internationals coming back home. All those South Africans who were living abroad coming back home. The people like uh, Mrs. Tam was on the panel, Mike Muendane whatever, and we started discussing us coming back home. I remember distinctly what I was wearing, a red coat dress and kind of cream white stockings. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> I hope the SABC does not play a that one. Of <laughs> oh my gosh. Because you heeded a call from <laughs> Nelson Mandela saying, um, come back to South Africa to yes. rebuild our new democracy. When he made that call to all South Africans living abroad, please come back home and come and serve your country. I was sitting on a couch that day, uh -huh. and I said to my family, I think he's talking to, to me. Because you were married at that time. That's already. right, married, two children. They were still very young. And my husband has always said that you're the type that makes things happen. Oh, wow. You are a risk wow. taker. You, you, you don't hear the, the noise, the negative noise. You always are focused on what you believe will make a difference. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi puts it so well. He says, be yeah. the change you wish to you see, see in the world. And I think that's wow. how, what I'm trying to do. So Live profound. my life in such a way that I know I've made a small difference in my own little way. We are all geniuses in our own way. God is not in the mode of creating duplicates. You are an original, Bonnie. You are here for a purpose. You find that purpose and follow it with passion. Right, so from the woman who had the first talk show in South Africa mm -hmm. to me, advice. How do you make a great talk show host? I think believing in what you're saying, worrying about what you've brought those people in studio for. I'm gonna give you an example here. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the, the talk show format came later when I convinced the SABC at that point that, listen, it's not about talking heads. It is about bringing black and white South Africans, young and old, able and challenged into that studio. Into to dialogue. Talk, yeah. Into dialogue. We were so scared of each other. We had lived apart for so many years. And this was the opportunity to bring us together to start talking. We had had over 40 years of apartheid that has separated us. I look at the people in the studio now together working with you. 
the Rainbow Nation is in the studio. So that's really what the show was all about. But back to what you're asking me, you said, what, what advice? Top advice, yes. Top advice. Top advice is be authentic and truly feel it. It's from the head, from the heart, from the hand. And I'll explain to you, integrity is key. Number two, feeling what the other person feels, caring. Empathy. It was not about glamour and glitter. In fact, I think sometimes my makeup was going a certain oh, direction. But you and so they'll call glamorous. me and say, we have to, you we have to so fix, up, fix up your makeup. I said, no, no, let's go on. I'm going to lose my train of thought. Let's, let's yeah. continue. So it, it was quite exciting. Your book, Live Your Dream, which is your second book. Uh -huh. And your first one was Dare to Dream. Dare to Dream. Mm -hmm. What are these series of books about? Well, first you see, I'm in uniform. Mm -hmm. I'm in uniform. I see this. I always, yeah, I, see this. I always do that when I'm going to be talking. You love that color. It's I love this, on you. I love the color. It kind of brightens me. But the book really, Dare to Dream, was about my dream. Is this girl from Soweto who wants to ultimately become somebody? This book is about your dream. I found the little nuggets, the lessons mm -hmm. of trying to get there. It's about your success. It's about taking that success you have right now and moving it to significance. Success is about self-empowerment. Significance is about empowering others. It is about giving back in many ways. I'm giving back little nuggets here. Many people say to me, can you please mentor me? I cannot mentor from far. I cannot mentor even when I'm here yeah. enough. So I decided to put all that mentoring in this in book. This book. What That's, are some of the most profound moments you experienced while writing this book? I, I think at some point in your life, you ask yourself, what am I on this world for? Mm -hmm. And uh, my daughter sent me a text today about her guilt, about leaving her two-year-old for the first time and traveling away. She said, when I read the text, it says, I've just had a long conversation with Naya, who is two years old, yeah. about going to, that mommy is going to go on a plane alone and she's going to leave her at home with daddy and the mother-in-law. And, and I looked at this text, I was like, wow, you know, women really we live with a lot of guilt but it's her first time away from the baby so getting back to your question you have to find those moments that make you start thinking for me i understood that you know i write something here in this book that says your life is your purpose your story is important we all have a story your dreams count your voice matters you were born to make an impact. And I saw this quote somewhere, Tumblr, I think, or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. And it lived with me ever since then. I made sure that that purpose I've been put here on earth for is carried out in some way. And it is mostly to uplift and help and power young people. That is why I started with that cultural center for young people. That is why in the 80s, I started a scholarship program for South African students uh, to come to the United States, study yes. there, and come back home and serve. And I'm so proud to see what most of them are doing here. I'm They're doing. entrepreneurs. They have MBAs. They have BAs. They have uh, uh, PhDs. They're teaching at universities. Some of them are brand gurus. You know, it's, it's just it's amazing. amazing. Yeah. And yeah. I take my yeah. hat off to most of them. But I continue that journey. I'm still going on helping young people as best I can. You just have to have a passion and a purpose. Thank you so much. I've gleaned so much from just sitting here and basking under all this knowledge. It's Thank been you such very an much. honor no, it's, having it's, you. It's been a pleasure, but I'm I really ask you to sign encourage my book as well. everybody to try and get this book. I call it a, a roadmap to help it. And as I said, Bonnie, it's not even about my dream is about their dream. We talk about things like how to dare to dream big, make sure your passion is your mission. We talk about Ubuntu. 
something that we should not forget. Young people should not forget. It is all about giving back in some way or other. Not staying away from negaholics. I can see that you know how to do that. Look at you. Look how you're <laughs> Took thriving me a long right time to learn that. Right <laughs> and this is the diva in you. You're a diva, <laughs> divinely inspired, victoriously amazing woman. Oh, thank yes. you so much. Thank, you, thank you so much. And I'm going to sign it to the best diva in the world. Woo!